Hello and welcome to State Matters and to a new decade. Try to believe it's 2020. I'm your host, Matt Muratori. As you know, the 400th commemoration of the Pilgrim's Landing on Plymouth Rock will be occurring this year with seven signature events and well over 100 sanctioned events in and around the town of Plymouth and the entire Commonwealth. The eyes of the United States and the world will be on us. Forbes magazine just announced Plymouth as one of the top 25 destinations to visit in 2020. So for 2020, we will be devoting the entire year discussing these major events and some fantastic guests. I couldn't think of a better guest to join me for the beginning of this decade and 2020 than my guest today. She was first elected to the State House of Representatives on November 6, 2018. She shares a portion of Plymouth with me, and she's the very first elected female state representative for the 12th Plymouth District. Please join me in welcoming the Honorable State Representative Kathy Lanatra. Thanks, Welcome. Yeah. Did you know you were the first female ever elected? I did. Yeah, I, didn't I didn't realize that, that when I was running. Yeah. Um, I did not know that, yeah. but what a great thing to be, right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Thanks but, for having me. But it's me. hard to believe in, in this day, day and, age, and age, it's taken that long. True, <laughs> yeah. true. Yeah. Well, there hasn't been a lot of women running, yeah. so yeah. to give yeah. it credit. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. Well, I'm really pleased to have you here. Thank you. We always start a show off uh, learning who our guests are. So tell people that may not know you who you are. So as you said, I'm Kathy Lanatra. I live in Kingston with my husband and two children are still at home and two are out on their own. Um, I have three boys and a daughter and my youngest, a happy thing today, not my youngest, my second to oldest, my Nicholas, who is 23, is flying home today from Germany. Oh, so I'm terrific. very excited. Yeah. He's in the military, he's in nice. the army, so. How long has he been in for? Since, um, he's been in since last July. Okay. Um, hasn't been home since then, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, Febu So we know, that's a lie. So he's been in since February, so he hasn't been home since February. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nice. So good. it's exciting. That's good, good, yeah. good, good. What else should people know about you? What do you do for business? Um, I've done many things. So mm. I've owned small businesses most of my adult life. Mm -hmm. I owned a bridal shop in Hanover called Lillian's Fashions and Bridals. Oh, really? And we were like, if people remember Yolanda's, we were like Yolanda's of the South mm -hmm. Shore, oh, yeah. which was fantastic. Um, from there, I worked with designers, and I worked in New York and designed wedding gowns. Um, and then one day out of the blue, after 11 years, someone actually from Plymouth had called me and asked me if I wanted to sell. Mm -hmm. And I was told by a mentor of mine, when someone calls and the price is right, you go. <laughs> so I did. From there, I... Um, Selling houses? No. From Selling there, what? I owned a gym. Oh, really? I did. Oh. I owned a gym. I was a personal trainer for elite athletes and a group fitness instructor for many years. So that was probably, I did that for probably 10 years. Wow. And then from In and around there, the South Shore? From the South Shore, yeah, many yeah. different gyms. We yeah. had a gym in Hanover mm -hmm. um, that after my fourth child, I decided I no longer wanted to own the gym. Mm -hmm. I was in partnership with someone and, and sold out of that partnership, which was great, mm -hmm. and then worked for other gyms. Um, Duxbury Fitness, Body to Soul, Health Tracks. I mean, I was everywhere, um, went to people's homes. And that was a great opportunity when you had small children too, because mm -hmm. it was easy to make your schedule around their schedule. So mm -hmm. that was really helpful to me and it kept me in shape. And mm -hmm. then um, I was getting older and too many cortisone shots in the shoulders and the knees and wow. decided to switch gears again. And that's when I became a real estate broker. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing that for probably seven years now. Mm -hmm and love that and I work here. My office is actually in Plymouth on Court Street. Oh, wow. Yeah. Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Hanover. Okay. Yeah, very close to still. A lot of my friends that moved back to town. Mm -hmm. My parents still live there, which is nice, oh, so nice. I'm there yeah. quite a bit. Did you go to Hanover High? I went to Hanover High School. Because yeah, I grew up yes. in Rockland. I went to, uh, Rock, oh, uh, so you were a rival. Yeah, you were yeah. one of the rivals. Yeah, yeah, we have yeah. a new high school in Hanover now, yeah, which I, saw that. I yeah. never got, I, yeah. I went to see. So it was kind yeah. of neat. We had a class reunion when they were tearing down the old high school, so we all walked through it before the reunion, before oh, they nice. tore yeah, it down. Yeah, yeah, but it was a great place yeah. to grow up. Oh, that's great. Terrific, terrific. So um, I just learned a lot about you that I didn't know, but what, if there was one thing that maybe people don't know about you, what, what would that be, do you think, as a state Gosh, rep? Gosh, that as a state rep yeah. or as well, in general, just in general yeah, what yeah. people wouldn't know about me? Yeah. Um, 
That is such a great question, and I don't know if I have the answer. Well, what would probably people all, know? Probably all this that you probably just said. Probably all that I yeah, just said. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, everyone knows that you know I'm very involved with the seniors in my community, mm -hmm. and I, I always have been. It's always mm -hmm. been my bailiwick. I was a candy striper at South Shore Hospital, and where you at? So I, I was at Brockton were? Hospital. Yeah. Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah. Um, and I and everybody <coughs> wanted to be in the nursery. Everybody mm -hmm. wanted to be with babies. Mm -hmm. As much as I love babies, and people mm -hmm. call me the baby hog, they had a geriatric ward at that time, okay. and that's where I spent all my time. Is that right? Oh, and so I oh. really enjoyed that. My best friend's mother um, used to work at Bay Path. Oh, nursing yeah, home, yeah, Jeannie so. Marsh, do you know Jeannie Marsh? I know the name, yeah. So Jeannie yeah, Marsh, yeah. and then she worked at the Duxbury House as well with Alzheimer's. So growing up, we were always with her, mm -hmm. and we made beds, and we made you know, friends, really. Mm. So the senior center in Kingston, I started calling bingo, oh, it's been probably four or five years ago, uh -huh. and I actually only, I went in to do Meals on Wheels, mm -hmm. and they cornered me for bingo. And when I tell you it's the toughest job I have I is calling yeah. Bingo once yeah, a month sure. at the senior center. And I do do Meals on Wheels too. Yeah. But that um, that's where I find yeah. my happiness and they're my friends and yeah, and I really that's enjoy terrific. that. Good for you. Good for you. So you, you spent some time on committees and boards in Kingston. I have. So tell us, you know, some of the committees and my boards. My first you um, committee or commission was Recreation Commissioner. Oh. And that came up out of the blue, I played bunko with a group of 12 women. What's bunko? Bunko is a dice game. Okay. Um, there's a little money involved, but it's okay. mostly gifts, so okay. it's you know, above board. <laughs> but we played once a month and- Gambling is legal in Massachusetts, <laughs> so I think you're okay now. <laughs> this is back in the day. Um, we were playing and it, and it came up and someone said, you should run for it. And I'm like, really, you think so? And they said, yes. It's so an elected I did. position. It's an elected position. Really? It was the first thing I really ran for as yeah. an adult. Yeah. Um, and was a rec commissioner for about 10 or 11 years. Oh, wow. Really enjoyed that. But from that, I became involved in CPC, Community Preservation Commission. Um, I, I did that, what else did I, oh my gosh, there's so many things. I did wind up running for selectman as well, yep. and I was a selectman in Kingston. Um, I was one of the founders of the Affordable Housing Trust in Kingston, which mm -hmm. is really important. As a realtor and as a mother mm -hmm. of a 26 year old, you know, finding affordable housing is very Isn't important. It, it is. Yeah, I, I, I've really talked awful. about on the show before. I have two older daughters, and about three or four years ago, they were in relationships and they were getting out of them, and they wanted to move back home again. And yeah. Like, we sat them down. We said, "Well, what about if you pulled your money together to get something?" And they ended up buying a townhouse in Halifax. Oh, but wonderful. That's the only way, and they, they both have it. two fantastic jobs. Mm -hmm. But that's the only way they could afford to do something, at least. Yeah, it's tough to be younger it's nowadays. It's tough to be to start out being young. It's tough to be older and wanting to transition, mm -hmm. even though you're, you know, you can't afford to keep up this big house that you have. Your taxes are going to be lower than buying something new. Yeah. So it's it's really challenging, and I hear this all the time, and I'm sure you do mm -hmm. too, as a rep. Um, housing is an issue. Mm -hmm. There's not enough, and when I have a listing that's considered affordable, which considered affordable is under 400,000. So that's a big mortgage payment. I have at least six offers on that house. Yeah. And I it bet. always goes over, usually goes over, but now this is the same pool of people that I'll see for the next affordable house yeah. and you develop a relationship with them and you just feel horrible. You yeah, really do. Yeah. So there's not enough out there for yeah, our young people yeah. or our older people or just our teachers, our firefighters, our police officers. You know, there really just yeah. isn't enough out there. And just recently, the um, uh, the House Commission, mm -hmm. House Committee, actually just voted out some some housing bills yes. that we should be hopefully taking up the yes. first of the year. That would be great, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, because we need a lot more mm -hmm. workforce housing, housing for seniors, et cetera. Mm -hmm. so. Um, so it's your, your first year has come to an end. My first year has come to an end. Almost, yeah. January yeah. 3rd. Yeah. Yes. Well, we're in January now. So. Oh, yes, that's right. We're in January now. Yeah. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> um, the Christmas tie threw me off a little bit. <laughs> I'm still in the Christmas spirit. Uh, <laughs> so what's your first impression? Well, I will say every single time I walk in that building, I take a deep breath because mm -hmm. it's such an amazing building yeah. and I'm so honored and humbled to have this position mm -hmm. and it carries a heavy weight um, so I think at first I was very overwhelmed with wow just walking in every day and then 
you were in the bullpen as a freshman, which mm -hmm. you remember. So mm -hmm. I was in the bullpen. We were in the bullpen for quite a while. Yeah, so for people at home, what the bullpen is is, is uh, when freshman legislators are elected. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have an office yet, so they're thrown in one big room together. Democrats, Republicans together, together with their legislative directors as well, and mm -hmm. you. But it's a. I, I think why they do it too is because it's a bonding experience. It is a bonding experience, and the good thing is that you're with representatives from all over the state. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it seems like a lot were newly elected from Western Mass, which mm -hmm. I really didn't know a lot about. Mm -hmm. And then we have some Boston reps too that are mm -hmm. new. So you get to learn about the whole Commonwealth which I find fascinating. Mm -hmm. So the issues that we have in the 12th Plymouth are not the issues that they have mm -hmm. in Western Mass or they have in Roxbury. Mm -hmm. So that was a great learning experience for me. Um, but then when I ever got my office, I was thrilled. I love my office, you mm -hmm. know that. I talk mm -hmm. about it all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm in um, between healthcare finance and ways and means. Mm -hmm. Great place to be, mm -hmm. great it place is, to be. Is. So I learned Good something. to be a Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still in the basement. I know, I know. Um, so I, I'm very fortunate, and yeah. I know how fortunate I am that I have a wealth of knowledge around me, and I'm not afraid to ask questions. And everybody's been wonderful, you as well, you know, like mentoring and, and answering my questions. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been, it's been a great experience. Um, I did not know what to expect, so mm -hmm. I'm yeah, well, kind of What learning. do you think you were expecting? I don't really know what mm -hmm. I, ex I think I expected more debate on the mm -hmm. floor. Mm -hmm. I definitely think I expected yeah. more yeah. debate on the mm -hmm. floor. And that was one of the reasons I wanted to get my speech over quickly. So um, for those that don't know, we have the maiden speech that we yeah, have to do. Yeah, before you're allowed to talk on mm -hmm. the debate on the House floor, you have to do a maiden speech. Right. And you did yours on? Healthcare finance. Yeah, yeah on healthcare finance. Yeah. Um, and I was honestly, so our colleague, Jen Benson, who mm -hmm. is the chair of healthcare finance, mm -hmm. who we just found out is leaving, mm -hmm told Great me, loss, yeah. just yeah. out of the blue, said you should do your maiden speech on this because mm -hmm. it was something I was passionate about. And I jokingly said, yes, I will, mm -hmm. right? Like, sure, here, I'll do it today, mm -hmm. not prepared at all. And I came, we had a little break and I mm -hmm. came back to my, we were in the chamber and we sit next to each other, came back to my desk in the chamber. And she said, so are you going to do your maiden speech? And I went, oh, you were serious? Yeah. And she said, yes. I said, oh, I don't know. She goes, well, the speaker thinks it's a good idea. Yeah. And I went, I guess I'm doing you it then. You guess you're doing it, yeah. So yeah. That, it was good yeah. to get yeah. it over with. So now I feel free. You can speak to anything now. Yeah. Um, but I did it that soon, thinking there would be more debate. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I'm, mm, Yeah. you so, know, that was a surprise yeah, to yeah. me. Not that there isn't debate, but I thought there would be more. More, yeah, mm. yeah. Um, did it... Um, surprise you about the relationships that you have built with um, not just Democrats but Republicans as well because you hear people hear so much yes. of what happens in Washington right. and we recently saw about the whole impeachment how yeah. it's divided you know across party lines and all that when I first went in five years ago I, I was kind of nervous about that because I thought that's the way it would be at the state house but what's your what I originally you did think that mm. um, as I was campaigning I met you mm. um, in, in you know former Senate uh, Senator DiMazzito, mm -hmm. and realized it wasn't like that. Mm -hmm. And it's wonderful. And what I find at the State House is that you have to work with everybody because mm -hmm. you're representing a district. And I share Plymouth with you. Mm -hmm. I share Middleborough with Norm Oral, who mm -hmm. is a great friend as well. So I, when I'm at the State House, I don't see that. I really don't yeah. see Allison Sullivan, another mm -hmm. example, great friend, mm -hmm. um, Representative Sue Gifford, mm -hmm. great friend. I mean, we do disagree on things. You know that we course, disagree yeah, on things, right. but we're very respectful and mm -hmm. we're friends as well. Mm -hmm. And we want the best for Plymouth, mm -hmm. and I want the best for the rest of my district. Mm -hmm. You have all of Plymouth, most mm -hmm. of Plymouth, except for, and I have the six parts of six yeah, towns. Yeah, tell people what you have. I have all of Kingston, all of Plimpton, all of Halifax. Um, I share Plymouth with you. I have three precincts in Plymouth. I have one in Duxbury and one in Middleborough. Mm -hmm. So I have a, it's a wide variety. Middleborough is much different than Bay Road and Duxbury. Yeah. So I um, have to be a little bit of a chameleon, mm -hmm. but it's great. I love well, it's just like it. Plymouth, too, though. Yeah, North that's Plymouth true. is so different from Manomet mm -hmm. to, to Cedarville, et cetera. It's just, mm -hmm. everywhere is different. All politics is really local. It's so it true. Is. It really it is so is. true. And you're right about working working together. I mean, there's a lot of issues that affect the South Shore. Right. Uh, or even Cape Cod with the, you know, with the, the bridge they're talking about now. So by yes. working together, that's how we're able to get things right. done. And yeah. we want solutions yeah. for our yeah, constituents. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 
So uh, you talked about, talk about some of the committees that you're on and what you've uh, done so far. Okay, so um, economic development, which mm -hmm. was really important to me, it's one that I... That's the number one you asked for. I, that's what yeah. I asked for and mm -hmm. I did receive it. We're talking sports betting. Oh, yes. Fascinating. Yeah, yeah. Like, you, so many different avenues there. Where um, does that stand now, the sports betting? We're going to vote on it when we get back, so okay. we'll see. But many hearings on it, mm -hmm. different parts of hearings. Um, Governors for it. Governors for it. We have legalized gambling in mm -hmm, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. What's the holdup, do you think? Or what's the resistance from some people? The resistance, actually, well, so there's different kinds of sports betting. So there's sports betting on professional teams, mm -hmm. and then there's sports betting on college teams. So that is is not going over well. You know, okay. puts a lot of pressure on our college students that are okay. there. And some college students will get a scholarship, right, for sports. Mm -hmm. And somebody could try to lure them with some money to throw a game. Mm -hmm. or, and the pressure for that, and they're young. I mean, let's mm -hmm. face it, mm -hmm. you know, they're young people. Um, and it could be somebody coming that really could use that money, mm -hmm. you know. So things like, we, there's a lot of talk about that. Um, so we're gonna vote on it after, when we get back. Mm -hmm. And I'm really not sure how it's going to go. Mm. I'm, I'm optimistic. Gotta, yeah, I am too. I got. Mm. I got to believe it's, it's yeah, probably going to go through. I'm optimistic about it. It's, it's happening anyway, as we it all is. know. It so is. why not, you know, grab some revenue exactly. from it to do it? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've talked. We've had some great field trips. I was in Gloucester with that committee, talking to the lobstermen, the lobster mm -hmm. industry there, and how they've suffered with the tariffs. And mm -hmm. Canada's been selling um, mm -hmm. their lobsters there, and. Um, to China. Mm -hmm. um, when I say there, I mean China. So that was really interesting mm -hmm. to me. It, and we have a big fishing community here in Plymouth sure. and lobster sure. community, so it was great to hear yeah. that. Uh, another Elder Affairs, great mm -hmm. committee that mm -hmm. I asked for mm -hmm. as well. Like I had said previously, seniors are my mm -hmm. jam, so to say, as my kids say, yeah. or I say my bailiwick. Um, so that's been great, mm -hmm. and Chair Balzer has been fantastic, and it's... Um, we sit on the Nursing Home Task Force together, her and I. Oh, yeah, do you? Yeah. She's wonderful. Yeah, she's, she's just great. And really, Senator really Jalen, yeah. which is They're very both, strong they women. They both sit on the task force, and uh, some really passionate people about elders. Yes. And uh, how, to, how to do things better for elders. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So those are yeah. great committees. I'm also on um, election laws. Hmm. Which I didn't ask for, but I was, and that's we Chair Lawn. We always get those ones we, we didn't get ask those. for, yeah. <laughs> Chair Lawn, and it's ranked choice voting is the big mm. thing, which mm -hmm. is... Explain people what that is. Please don't ask me to do that. <laughs> I need graphics. Yeah, I tried to explain it, is, it yeah. once without graphics. Well, <coughs> and it's... The way I... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So yeah, you yeah. would, instead of voting for just one person, you mm -hmm. would rank your choices. Mm -hmm. So if there was more than two people mm -hmm. in a race, you would rank who you would like first, who you would like second, who you'd like third, and down the board. Um, and you need to get at least 50% of the vote. Mm -hmm. So when you have an election, so they say, I, it's easier for town elections for a selectman, select person. Usually there's more than two people mm -hmm. running. In my race, I think there was five or well, six. Let's use the example of the state senate, the special state senate race that's coming up. Oh, gosh. Yeah, what in a March. Big... So you got a few people there. So, yeah. so then it'd be the top two that, if they don't get 50%, then mm -hmm. it'd be the top two. Yes. And then yes. they would have a runoff. Yes. So would there be another election in another time? So that's what I, so that, that's a money cost to yeah, the town. That, exactly. So that's what yeah. we're discussing yeah. now. Yeah. And it is, it's very, do you find it challenging to explain it? It is, yeah. yeah. I did yeah. ask for graphics from mm -hmm. um, an organization mm -hmm. that's, you know, for it. And mm -hmm. they have sent them. And it is easier, I found, with mm -hmm. graphics. Mm -hmm. But it is, it's a, it, mm -hmm. and I find in, that if it's hard to explain, yeah. and this is what we do for yeah. a living, yeah. how hard is it going to be explained mm -hmm. to someone that, yeah. is not familiar with yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And it, but I understand the, the premise behind I it. Do too. I do, too. Like I do, too. Mm -hmm. I think Maine is actually doing it now. Cambridge does it. Uh, yeah, and there's, some, yeah, there's mm -hmm. some, some cities in Maine town does do it, it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but yeah, then it's, then it's the cost and how do you... Right, the cost. How do you get, the, how do you get that paid for? Right. Yeah, yeah. So those are, those are the three committees that you're And then on? I have a house committee. Oh, you have four committees. I do. Oh, wow. Intergovernmental Affairs. And okay. um, there's another little title that goes on to mm. that. And I can't think of it. The, but we, what we've been doing is field trips. So we took a field trip to Google. Oh, really? Yes, oh, yeah. in Kendall Square, the ah, campus. Okay. What an experience that was. Hmm. It is just so different from what I was brought up with. Um, in the work, what the workforce should look like. With the workforce, yeah, yeah. I, which I didn't mention when I, I was an economics major. My first job was at Fiduciary Trust Company in hmm. Boston, hmm. and I worked in the securities cage. So it was very 
stuffy, mm -hmm. so to say, mm -hmm. and very, you know, regimented, and you wore a suit every day, and you took your breaks when you're supposed to take your breaks, and you, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, Google is the opposite. So mm -hmm. they have their dogs with them. Really? They're in flip, it was like winter, they're in flip flops, they can eat anytime they want, they can sit wherever they want, which is fantastic mm -hmm. for the workforce now. Yeah. I had anxiety walking I bet, through there. Yeah. I that was just too. like, oh, 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 what do you mean you don't have your own desk? You yeah. just sit wherever you want. What do you? So I had a little bit of anxiety yeah, yeah, yeah. walking through there, yeah. but it was fascinating to me. <laughs> That's funny. Where'd you go to school? Framingham State. Framingham State, yeah. right, great, great. Um, if there was one thing that you do differently about this job, or maybe you don't like about this job, what would that be? What I don't like about yeah. this job, that I don't have enough hours in the day. Yeah. I would honestly say that, like, you How know. How do you do that with six communities? Um, it's challenging. So it's things, ch yeah. And you'd think I'd be a rail by now, right? <laughs> like, I have six communities, you <laughs> think, great. you know? Um, it's, and the, the killer is, is they're all things that I want to attend. Sure, sure. But I could be, and you as well, because mm -hmm. Plymouth is a hop in place, at five different events at once. Mm -hmm. And you try to do the best you can, and um, sometimes it's an in and out thing, mm -hmm. and you just show your face and show your support and um, shake some hands, kiss mm -hmm. some babies, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> that type of thing. But there's so many issues that I'm really passionate about, and you know, mental health is one of them. Mm -hmm. And I was at a, a training um, last night for teen depression, and it, it was something that I, I felt that was important for me to be at. Sure, sure. So I had to cut the open house at ARC, which is another passion mm -hmm. of mine, sure. short. Yeah. So I do find that challenging. I have a fantastic legislative aide, Christopher Jean. I was just gonna bring him up. Yeah. yeah. And, and how come you don't have more having six communities? I don't know how he does I it I don't either. know. Can you answer that question for me? I think you need to talk to the speaker about that. <laughs> don't think I haven't hinted. I bet, yeah. I have hinted. Um, he keeps my schedule. Yeah. So, um, our legislative directors are really our backbone. They I mean, really are. They as do. You know, Betty DeBenedict has been around. She's amazing. with me. She's been with Tom Calter before mm -hmm. that for years. Mm -hmm. and they, they, just, they just know how to do this. They do. And they do so much yeah. of the work and yeah. we get the credit. Yeah. You yeah, know? I know. So I, know. I really appreciate yeah. that. But he keeps me on task. Um, if I'm at an event and I get a little too chatty, I get the look. Yeah. Like, okay, you need to go. And he'll remind me of things, or I will commit to something, and I'm sure you do it too, six months in advance, mm -hmm. totally forget about it. Mm -hmm. And then you look and you're like, what's this on my calendar? And mm -hmm. they say, remember, mm -hmm. and then you have your notes. So we couldn't yep. do it without them. Yeah, we really absolutely couldn't. right. And the calendars now, I mean, having the calendars on your oh phone are so great nowadays. It is, <laughs> it is, it really is. But I would say that is the hardest yeah, part yeah, for me, yeah. is the time management. Yeah. And then with that, the emails, keeping up with emails. Mm. So we probably get 300 emails a day, when you'd think. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. if they're con from constituents, you want to get back as yeah. soon as you can. And sometimes it can't be that day. You could be right. in session, yeah. you know, the filing of bills. You, you want to research those bills if you're going to vote on them. So that I find very challenging. Between the two of us, it's still very challenging. Mm -hmm. But that, um, you could use I, I remember first starting out and uh, trying to answer all the emails, and mm -hmm. it finally came to the point that, you know what, if they're constituents from Plymouth, I will. Yes. If they're not, yes. yeah. I just don't, I just, you just can't. There's no way to do it all. If there isn't. I do have an automatic reply now that explains yeah. that, yeah. you know, I'm thrilled to hear from you. Yeah. Please understand, I get so many emails, I will get yeah. back to you as soon yeah. as I can. And yeah. sometimes it will take me a week, which is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how, how as you mentioned, you have, you have four kids, you're, mm -hmm. you've got a professional life, you've got this public life now, how, how, and you're married, and your husband's a police officer, mm -hmm. and how do you balance all this? Professional and personal and family life and... I do, so... Um, but you're always smiling. I am always smiling. <laughs> cool, because I love my job. I love yeah, everything that yeah. I do. I, I do, and I, um, I, I do feel very fortunate to have this position. I, I've always been busy, so I've always had this lifestyle mm -hmm. where I've been busy. And as busy as I am and as out there in the community as I am, so is my husband. Mm -hmm. So we can do, we both coached, we're both, you know, we've both coached youth teams. He still coaches. That's now it, what's he coach? baseball right now nice. um so a lot of things we can do together and a lot mm -hmm. of things we can do as a family and i like my children to see that i'm involved in the community mm -hmm. and giving back sure. yeah. because that makes them want to be you mm -hmm. know be a public servant so 
But it just, it works. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Some days I just mm -hmm. don't want to get out of bed and I want to stay there and say, oh, yeah, what am I doing? But I enjoy being out mm -hmm. there and I enjoy being busy. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's important to bring your spouse to events that they want to be. Very important. And very I know important. I see your husband, your yeah. wife comes to some yes. things as well. It's, a, yes. it's important to do that, you know, when, when you can. When you can. Yeah. Um, because they sometimes don't understand that it's work. Yeah, right. right. They don't understand. I, I can't call it date night anymore. Yeah, I was told <laughs> <not> to. So. <laughs> sometimes I'll bring it to an event. I'm like, this oh, is our date, date night. night. Like, Where this is whatever. <laughs> I was like, oh, we got this event to go to. And cut but we couldn't do it without our supportive yeah, spouses absolutely. either. We absolutely, really couldn't yeah. do yeah. it without that. Yeah, yeah. So. And every time before I'm ready to run, I said, what do you think? We're going to do it again? Yes. Yeah, okay, let's do yes. it again. Okay. We had a big family meeting before I ran because it was mine was like a last minute thing. Um, whether it was because it was an open seat, I ran. That's Tom right. had left, yeah. and you had just become selectman, or you're there for a year. I was there for two years. Two years, okay. Um, so it was like, ooh, it's yeah. a great opportunity, yeah. and do I, do I not? So we had a big family discussion. All Nick was home then, mm -hmm. so there was my four children, my husband, and myself, mm -hmm. and they're like, why would you not do this? Yeah. If you don't do this, you're going to kick yourself. So mm -hmm. I did, and I'm it's glad I did. It's all about timing, isn't it? It is yeah. about timing. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I always try to advise people that want to run for something, don't try to force something if it's not going to work right. for your lifestyle at this point. Because it's a lot of yeah, pressure on your family. Yeah, make sure your family's behind yes. you for it. Yeah, you yeah. couldn't do it without your family no, behind you. No, There's a lot of pressure all. there. Yeah. But you do, um, again, balancing is the calendar really helps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I just bought a Peloton bike, which I told you before this. You really need to take care of yourself, too. Absolutely. Because yeah. if you don't, yeah. Yeah, this absolutely. is not the job you can get sick yeah, at. Yeah, I, I've been to the gym 140 days since July 1st of 2018. Good for you. Good for yeah, you. so I'm going to continue to do that, and then yeah. I'm going to start cutting back on it. I've lost 12 pounds, but Good for you, you do feel a lot better. You have you more do. energy you have to have do more things. Energy. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about that commercial? So I never saw the commercial, yeah. but coming from a fitness background, mm -hmm. I always think of fitness as a mind-body thing. Yeah. I never think of it as a always as a weight issue. Yeah, right, it's, right. It's definitely... Um, one of my things I did is I used to teach boxing, okay. so I boxed, and that to me was all mental. Yeah, that yeah. was, I couldn't wait to put on those gloves or hold those mitts for someone, and I could see someone that's 16 to someone, I think uh, this man I trained was 85, I would have hit, and it was just a mental thing. Yeah, so yeah. that's how I look at fitness, yeah, yeah. Um, and the so other you, benefits you, so, are great. So you'd be fine with your husband bought you one then? If you, well, didn't, if you didn't have this one. This is the funny thing. Yeah. I've wanted one, yeah. or I've asked for one for yeah. two years for Christmas. Oh, really? And okay. I didn't there get it. Go. So I became my own Santa and bought my own. Ten seconds left. Oh, Goal, boy. Goals, goals for 2020. Oh, goals for 2020 to continue to learn more, um, research more, and work on mental health. Work on mental health. Yeah. That, good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good. You, yeah. tell me yours. Yeah, no. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have you. Thank you so much thank for coming you. on. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us for our first show of 2020. And thank you again to the staff here at PAC TV for another outstanding show. And thank you all at home for watching. We'll see you next time on State Matters.